So hi again, um, I'm inside of Adobe Spark and what I'm going to do is a quick walkthrough to talk about how to create some layering or maybe even some 3D effects inside of a simple photograph. Um, this is going to be something we'll work on class in the next couple of weeks, but I just wanted to show it to you now. All right, first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to work with this. Now, to the big part about all of it is when you when you start, you need to make sure you pick a background it kind of has a 3D effect to it already. So I chose these glasses, like it was a stock photo that I pulled out of the add option. Um, it'll open up, it might be a little bit slow. So I picked it out of the photos and just went ahead and did that. Now, this set right here with some of my branding materials on it was something that I worked on and kind of came up with it. And I'm just gonna show you some aspects with it. So first of all, you'll see like this piece as a whole is grouped together. Mostly I'm doing that so I can change the sizing of it as we go through. So some people will ask, like somebody might ask, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to size it together? This is how I started my header for my YouTube channel. And I wanted to make sure it was the right size. I had to make sure this section here was the appropriate size to fit onto a phone screen because the stop, the top of the top of the channel art, pardon me, the top of the channel art is a certain size. If it's not there, it won't show up. So I had to make it and resize it. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. The other part too is, as you can see, when you change the sizing of the font, it starts to do some things with your eyes. So if you notice, as you look at it, it's one of those things where like, it kind of looks like it's part of it. It kind of doesn't look like it's part of it. Um, here's where I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna ungroup all of those tools and show you how these text backgrounds make the 3D effect. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my webcam to do that. And I'm trying to use some of the short keys today. Oh, hey, that actually worked. Let me see if it'll come back. Yay, it does. Okay, cool. All right, so there you go. That's the moment which I realized that that's how it works. Um, so this piece right here is, as you can see by itself, I'm gonna go ahead and double click it so you can see that it's just one piece of writing and uh, I think Adobe Spark's gonna agree with me, yeah. So you can see I'd made the two layers there. Um, I'm gonna go and click done. I did use the customize and fit option. If you go with this one where you do center and align, it kind of looks like that. That's fine. I'm, you know, I'm one of those, I kind of like this. So when I went with my color set, which is here, what I tried to do was I tried to pick a color using the background, using the wall background. Now you can do, um, you can inside the styles and the effects, not the styles, but inside the effects, you can do cutouts where it goes through. So you, I have a shadow on it to begin with, but what you can also do is you can do a cutout of it. Now the problem with the cutouts is that if you do that, it automatically creates these boxes and I didn't like how the box is set up. So what I did was instead of using the boxes, I tried to pick a primary color for the font that's similar to the stuff that's the background. And it deceives, it makes your eyes deceive and think that it's sort of cut and laying on there and, and creating these layers. The other thing that I did was each of these sets, so this is grouped together again, because I like the way I wanted it to work. So each of these, I first of all wrote them in they're all different widths. They are the same size. So if you, if you don't know how to click on the size, when you click on the font part over here for this size, when you click this carrot, it shows you the size of all the master fonts, but the two at the top are the sizes of all the fonts inside of the actual piece, inside of the Spark post that you're working on. So I tried to make sure that all four of those pieces were the same size. I also made sure that they're all the same font, so you can see. And then basically what I did was I picked one and then I just copied it and layered it down. And then down here with the bottom one, there's no striping. Let me click over here to, to take that off of there. So there's no striping on that. So how do you get the striping? Well, this is how you get the striping. What you do is you take shape and then when you pick it, you pick this one. So if I turn that to here, it only highlights the words and see that 3D effect kind of disappears. Whereas if you do the striping, 
it sends it out to the whole width of the actual piece. And now that is there for the whole, the whole thing. Now we'll say one of the things I've noticed is it kind of does these funky little pixelations on the edges. I'm not really sure why it does that, but it kind of layers it in. And then if you make sure that these stripes are not the same color, maybe a couple of different tones, or even try and make sure it's a similar tone to your uh, shadow on the larger font, it ends up creating sort of that uh, minimalistic layering effect that you have. Now, the last thing you want to look for is, is this. So when you pick a picture, and this deals with your eyes kind of doing it, the light source for this is obviously coming from behind the glasses and above the glasses. See, that's how you get the shadows there, shadows underneath these pieces. So it's probably somewhere right above here from the original picture. What I did with this stuff is that I tried to make sure that these were shadowing not the same way. And the reason why is because if it shadows down, it'll look, it'll make it look similar to that. If you shadow it this way, it kind of does something different. Now, if you want to change the shadowing, on the effects part, when you pick the shadow, you can change it here by sliding it. And as you notice, it kind of moves around and you might have to do this with your actual font. One of the catches or one of the problems that I had with this setup is that since the middle letter for my name is an F, it creates a horizontal line effect here. And I had to make sure that I wasn't creating another, you know, show it to you was it making another horizontal line below the f which if you set it at 180 or a negative 179 which is basically 180 um, it ends up making another line set and if i did this it sort of creates this weird sort of thing so what i did was i tried to create something that was sort of to the side and a little bit moving in and what i mean by that is let me get it back to where it was. It was, it was, it was about 90, uh, probably if I just unclick it. Um, so if I make a shadow on this side of the wording, it makes the light source look like it's going. And let me turn my camera back on here. If I make, if I make the light source to the left of the lettering, it makes it look like you're reading off the page. Whereas with this one, I have the shadow and it's drawing you in towards the other words. And it kind of goes that way with it. Now, um, Again, these are some simple things that you want to do. If you want to create that 3D effect, put some shadows the way you turn the shadows on. Go ahead and type what you have. Let me get rid of my, my face box here again. Um, so once you click and have your font, you want to do effects. You want to click shadows and do that. If you do the cutouts, it will create a box around it. Um, now somebody might be, well, what about the shadow and the outline? You can do that. I just didn't like it. See, as you do that, you kind of lose that 3D effect that I was going for before. You can try these, keep them, see what you want to do. But it's it's one of those things where it's whatever you want to try as you go through the process, you kind of get to and you'll figure it out. Now, the last thing I want to show you is, again, if you're using these boxes, you want to create a YouTube channel set or something else, you might want to make sure the stuff that is layered together, the stuff that affects it. So what I mean by is like this shadow creates a 3D effect because of these stripe lines on top of these boxes. You might want to make sure that you have them grouped together when you start resizing or if you start moving them around. And the reason for that is if you don't, you might accidentally move something into a spot that you don't want it. Also, don't forget your guides and use them accordingly. Now. If you want to see um, what it looks like, just check out the uh, YouTube channel header at the top of the page. Um, click like or enjoy, subscribe, send it out. This is another one from Mr. Wilson in BFW Classroom. Thanks.